uh, so as she was finally leaving, I said, uh, I said, um, I, I said, okay, well, on your way out, remember, you can always suck my balls. <laughs> and uh, she, <laughs> she didn't like that one. What's going on, everybody? So, uh, yeah, a little, a little different today. We don't have, we're not in Studio A, but who cares? You know why you're here. It's, it's one on one with me, Christian Harloff, and I've been having a lot of fun talking to these great guests that I've had over the last couple of weeks. And this one was a little full circle for me. This was, uh, I was got a chance to talk to comedian John Caparulo who I have uh, known for a very long time since my days at the comedy store and being a paid regular over there and then being able to um, to kind of meet and learn and, and know John and watching him kind of come up from um, from where he was back in like 2002, 2003 and, and becoming a, a really well-known comedian and, and going on the road and doing all this stuff. And we got to sit down and John's a really funny dude, but this conversation was... It wasn't really for laughs, to be completely honest. I went, I asked John a, a lot of different things. We talked about a lot of different things that had happened to him in his career, and and we t- we talked about his family, about you know being a dad, about how he felt when Mitzi Shore, who ran the comedy store, how when she passed away, how he was, and then we got into a bunch of different other things. He had some uh, experiences of, of why he stopped going to the comedy store, a couple of um, you know dis- uh, disputes that he'd got into with other comedians, and um, and we also talked about how he there was this thing this this thing that had happened to him at the uh, that was on TMZ somebody threw a, a glass at him and, and like what happened there how do you react to that as a comedian there's so much that we got a chance to talk about and I think you guys are really going to enjoy this interview whether you know John or not it's a really honest look into um this really great comedian and performer and you get you really get to see his point of view on a lot of different things so I hope you enjoy here you go all right, guys. So, welcome back to One on One with Christian Harloff. This is kind of like a full circle interview for me, and I'm I'm very excited for, to have my next guest here too, M- uh, Mark Ellis, who you guys all know and love. Had suggested said, "Hey, would you want to uh, interview?" Well, my next guest, and I was like, "Absolutely!" Is he, if he's available, and he is. He's awake. He's here, and <laughs> it's John Caprillo, comedian John Caprillo. John, I'm excited. I don't know the last time we talked for an hour, unless it was maybe at the comedy store, like. 15 years ago yeah it's been a while it's been a while so good to good to see you good to see you too good to have this time it is good that's that's really what it's all about settle in and uh, have a talk you know it is been a while it's been a while i think last time was maybe we were talking about some movies but we you know that's we're not gonna just talk about movies i know you're i bring it up every time i talk to you that you're the reason i know that john claude van damme was in breaking (laughs) two and it was like a revelation when when you told me that it's my only one of those two like i I don't have like a bunch (laughs) of other like you know hey check out (laughs) like this this funny extra or whatever good one though like it is it is is well you know what it was uh um i guess there's somebody else in there with him too that like i i was watching something recently and uh they said that there was uh i think there's somebody else from uh from bloodsport or something like in the yeah in the shot yeah i did and i never cast the whole the the whole yeah yeah i don't know if it's chung lee or what but uh (laughs) because of uh because he was in bruce lee movies uh, (laughs) yeah he was he was he he was pretty uh established yeah but chung lee in a speedo would be i think scary and intimidating at the same time it would be but i don't think canon films really cared (laughs) 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 they really didn't yeah they're just like whatever just throw whatever up there it doesn't matter no that movie was something breaking two and i think that is a that might actually been breaking i don't even remember it's that was breaking it was yeah. breaking right yeah, breaking yeah. two is when they saved the save the place oh from, yeah it uh, was a disaster, disaster. like really even is. like uh what is it uh the guy who played ozone yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, did you see the documentary about canon no, films no it's it's really good it's it's interesting i mean it's called i think it's called electric boogaloo because uh, <laughs> they had to you know they, they had, had to, to use that it. title again. Market it. but uh yeah it's it's really interesting he and and the guy who played ozone is like hey about breaking two sorry everybody <laughs> what, i'm what, so what, sorry what, what, that's terrible. what he's apologizing for i mean out of all the stuff that i mean because breaking isn't a great movie it's not but in comparison to breaking two it's right. the godfather i mean <laughs> it's uh it's 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 uh yeah it's, it's, it's way better than that yeah no it's not but that, again that's that's one of uh john and my so that's our it was like a common bond was to talk at the comedy store about uh breaking and, and John Club and damage just movies movies in general is uh, one of the things we'd always talk about back then yeah but that's kind of why I wanted I, I've been going through these and and it's funny too I posted this thing on my Instagram yesterday 
I'm going through these withdrawals. I don't know what it was. I think Mitzi Shore just passed away. Yeah. It was Mitzi's uh, passing, and I've been watching I'm Dying Up Here, and, and all oh, yeah, and yeah. all these things. And then I just... I, I read that book, but yeah, yeah, yeah I never... You haven't watched the show yet, right? Show. My wife watches the show. Stuff like that hits too close to home for me. I think that that's the thing. That's the, I think because maybe I'm not in it anymore, and yeah. then I started... like and I, I, I was getting ready in the bathroom, come out to my wife, and I go, I say, hey, listen... Um, how would you feel if I started hanging out at the store a little bit more? This is like two days ago. Yeah. And she yeah. goes, what? <laughs> and she's like, what? she's like, you don't do enough? And I'm like, I'm just saying, like, what if I want to hang out? I just want to get some guests for the show. And I was trying to ease her into it. And I go, what if I got up on stage a couple of times, right? And, she, and she's like, she's like what, what are, you have a midlife crisis now? And, and Ellis, I was telling Ellis about this. I was thinking about doing a set. He goes, talk to Cap. See how you feel after you're talking to Cabot. If you still, at the end of it, feel like you, you come out, you want to do that. I feel like a heroin addict. I'm like, should I go back and get another fix? Yeah, it's, uh, all I can say is I don't think it's, it's the place that it was. Um, and, it, you know, and, it, and, and that might be good or bad for you. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like for, you know, for a while, a long time there at that place, I really thought that it had gotten, um, the comedy store had gone back to its roots and kind of become like, the artist colony that it yeah. was in the 80s. Like Mickey's um, Stinky Jim. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, people, you know, the Tommy, who was the talent coordinator right. there, people, you, you know, a lot of people hated on him and stuff. And I, you know, and I understand why they did, because, of course, you know, he's got a lot of power over your career and what you want to do. I get it. But, I mean, I really thought from from talking to him and from, you know, working with him, with him so long... Like the guy really cared yeah. about what he was doing, and that matters a lot. Like for you know, I obviously benefited from that care. So I mean, I'm not going to be as mad at him as anybody else would. But he he really did. Like I mean, the guy would tell me, you know, oh yeah, my day off, I stopped by and I talked to the building. I'm like, that's 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 so weird. But it's so <laughs> weird in a good way for comics, right. you know, that the guy who's the talent coordinator, you know, who's He's not getting paid well, yeah. you know. Is 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 the, cares that much about his job? I mean, I thought it was, uh, you know, I always thought he was great for the place. And he really did make the place like it was just it was about, you know, instead of like this sort of dying wax museum of older comics, it was, you know, this place where a young, you know, young up and coming comic up and coming comics were, you know, we kind of were were. We were we were we were ruling the place. Yeah. You, you know? think that's shifted now? And that's like, I think I think it has yeah. more in the name, kind of like what other clubs have done. Well, I mean, I look, I I had I've had bad personal experiences. I don't know if you know anybody. So I, I you know, I just I just know that it, the place once Tommy they got rid of Tommy, the yeah. place has become a lot less uh, warm, and um, okay. well, it's not- just, it's it's become kind of a rough place all right let's let's jump to the, the happy years for, okay. for a second because i want to start with it because that's where i met you i met you yeah, back man. in like 2002 you, you, well, you I was were hosting you were hosting but you were blowing up that's still yeah. at this point i mean you were doing so 2002 and you had uh you've been working at the you were still working at the store you're just about done working at the store yeah i well yeah i got i i worked the the door from 99 to two the late 2001 right and right. you uh, just you just stopped working there because i mean yeah. i got i i was i didn't I was the one Ingram and I always laugh about this. Rick Ingram, another very fun, funny comedian. I was the I think the only person that <laughs> ever became a regular first and then started working there because I wanted yeah. to get all those different spots and yeah, plus yeah. I could get stoned and, and not worry about having to <laughs> actually get fired. It's a, it's a yeah. great place. It was really. It was, it was great. So, Any place that's like that is is awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but, uh, so, but you, when I get there, it's like. You were you, Sebastian. You guys were the guys. You guys yeah. were the guys that like were the up and coming kind of hot shit uh, comedians. And you watch your set. You it would be you and Sebastian. I think Ernst. Were, you everybody has their comedian that they'd yeah. be able to watch. And yeah. there's other ones you just can't. You don't want to watch other comedians a lot sure. of times. Sure, no, I know. I would I watch know. you. I'd watch Sebastian. And so tell me a little bit about like that time because now you're you know you're a seasoned vet at the time 2002 2003 it's like you're still you got to move your way up the ranks here what's that like as like you know you're in your 20s and and you're and you're trying to make a name for yourself that was really um you know it was one of the best times of my life really because it was um you know it almost felt like you know you were you were kind of like graduating from college at that point Mm -hmm. because you know I came out uh to LA in 99 Got in uh, at the comedy store shortly after that. I started working the door. I was a phone guy. And, you know, 
anybody who's seen that or or been a part of it or in any way, it's not fun. I mean, it's like you're watching other guys go on stage while you're climbing a ladder in the rain. You know, it's like it's just (laughs) it's not fun. And uh, but it's like. You know, you you know, and then you wait for like you know maybe you get a fallout spot, uh, you know, after like dice at at one forty, right? You know, right. and it, and it, it's just you know, which is scary, you know, as a young yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not it's a legend. It's, it's not a fun yeah. spot no, to no, go no. on. Um, so you know, I I just but the thing is, is when I got to to oh two oh three, like I started, you know. I started like you know when I went to Montreal. Uh-huh. Uh, that was that's like changed everything for you. It did. It did. Like it was, it was a big growing. Right. Uh, uh, it was a growth spurt for me because it, it it basically was like I went to Montreal and all the hell that I went through as you know working a door and grinding it out there. I, I could see the payoff, right? Because it it was actually it's like training for a big fight, and then you you, you win you win the fight. Well, because I mean, any anybody who's been through a hard situation, like you know, when you when you go through uh, adversity and then you you turn that into to positivity, you don't enjoy the adversity. Right. Like, there's never a time where you're like, man, it's great that I'm going through this. <laughs> it's really no. is is hell right now because uh, you know I'll come out on the other side even better. You don't know that. But when I went to Montreal, I really it it did it 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 show I really I I knew why I went through what I went right. through there, and um, so it was just it was it was awesome, and it was like okay, all of a sudden like you 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 become you know you go from ba- basically being nobody mm-hmm. there to actually. You know, people, people coming give up a to you. Shit. Yeah. Right. So, but leading up to the Montreal, because Montreal, so again, for people who are not familiar with it, it's like Montreal's like a really big showcase for comedians. Like John is mentioning, is that you do well in Montreal and a lot of things can happen for you, as was the case with John. But leading up to that, and now, because at the time, Duncan Trussell was was, was booking. Uh, he was the talent he coordinator. He was the talent then, coordinator. Yeah. So, yeah. leading up to Montreal, what what's it like as far as spots go? Like, are you, are you you're getting, I mean, you're not still going up after Dice at 1230 in the morning at that point because, like, you, because you're popular. Happen right at that point at the store anyway right, people right. are saying okay duncan's like and duncan's got a good eye for talent he knows who's who's uh who's doing well who's doing not and so you're getting up there what are your spots like as far as time and how long are you going up at that point um you know I, I it went from you know being in the belly room and being like you know essentially nowhere to you know i was basically getting it it, it, it gradually worked its way into i was i was getting a spot pretty much Sometime between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Which is good. It's, every yeah. night, yeah. almost every night, uh, uh, any night that I wanted. Like yeah. when I call in and I, I mean, the, you know, I give them availability and they would, you know, I, I would just, I would get spot, 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 right. spot. And you spot, feel and it would, when you're on the stage, or you, you know that I'm going to be getting more spots. You're, just, you're in the vibe. You're in, you're, you're in that, you're in that moment and, and, and you're hitting shots on the court. You yeah. know, you know, you know, you just, you feel it. Well, and, and there's, there's a pressure to that. To, I mean, to at least to somebody like me, I'm like thinking like, I got to justify this. Like everybody in the back who's, who, you know, isn't getting these spots yet or whatever. They're, they're all looking to see like, well, you know, does Cap deserve these right. spots or whatever? You know, so it's like, you know, I felt like I had to go on stage and make sure I, you know, I justified why I was where I was. Right. And, um. You know, I felt like I did for a long time. It was, uh, you know, it, it, it you know, I, I, I'm always the most critical person of anybody about myself and what, about my art. But, you know, I, I thought I did well for a long time. And it was really, that time was just like, it was really cool because, you know, I had gotten a development deal with, with uh, Fox. and That was like, after or before Montreal? That was from, uh, from that was Montreal. From Montreal. Yeah, okay. and, 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 and that was basically like sponsoring me to do what I loved because yeah. it was like, they just gave me a bunch of money for a sitcom that never happened. Yeah. And, <laughs> How long did you work on that for? Oh, it was a, they were always year deals because yeah, I got yeah, three yeah. three straight. You three of them. Yeah, and pretty and, nice. And, and it was awesome because yeah. I just like basically had, you know I bought a big screen TV a Trans Am <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and and I basically just I didn't have to go on the road or anything like that. I, right. I just basically had money to stay in town and and grow as a comedian, 
which was the dream. Did you use me. it? I mean, minus the TV and stuff. Did you did you use it pretty smart to for the for the most part to say, okay, I'm gonna structure this out. I have this much money to be able to live for the next couple of years to do comedy, or did you said, fuck it, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to make more. I'll blow some here. I'll buy a car, but but more so than just the car and the TV. I said, fuck it. You did. Yeah. Went for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's confidence went, in your stuff there I too, right? Uh, schooled in economics, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, right. I mean, when I saw when I saw those zeros in the checks, I was like, yeah. whoa. Oh. Do you think they were just going to keep? I mean, you're young. You think more are going to keep coming? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because yeah. It, you know, it, it, like that's now my salary. Right. You know, like, and you don't think of it as just a, a windfall that maybe you should put away. And right. and no, especially I when was, you get three of them. It, right. Right. When I got three in a row, I was like, yeah. I'm going to get them every year until I actually have a show. And of one course. of these fuckers going to keep it, going. This right. Is right. Right. Easy. Right. Wait. Wait. I mean, this is easy. Right. And. uh it wasn't, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, you get it's kicked in the balls by reality at one point. It, right? Of course. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just, and that's, that's one thing I remember when I, uh, one of the, one of the, I think it was the second time I did the tonight show. I, uh, I, I was, Jay Leno was actually really cool to the young yeah, comics yeah. who come on there and he actually takes the time to talk to him and, you know, give him advice and everything. And, and he, he said, uh, he said to me like, you know, when the second time I was on there, he's like, Hey, so, uh, so how's it going? And I, I said, um, I said, oh man, I, you know, I got a, I got another deal with Fox, so you know, I'm hoping to, you know, get a get a show on by next year, or whatever. And and he's like, hey man, ah, have an act. And I remember this specific. He just ah, have an act. Yeah. He's like, they can't take that from you. And I, I really didn't know what he meant. He was just like, the, he's like, have an act, work, uh, just work on your stand up and right. and have your stand up. It, it, because you can always depend on yourself, and and I didn't get it then. At the at the time, I was just like, "Well, he doesn't. Know. He just, you know, right. what does this guy know? Who's been hosting the Tonight Show for two <laughs> decades? <laughs> I, right. I mean, I I know because I've gotten two stupid development deals from Fox. So it's the arrogance I, I, of youth, my friend. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. And 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 I, you know, I found out pretty soon after that. He, he was so right that it was like, you know, as a comic, if you have your stand-up that you can always depend on as you know your means of you know supporting yourself right then you don't have to like sit and wait and worry about what decision hollywood's gonna make because they never make any fucking sense right you know it's it you always think you know you have it lined up like it's gonna go like this because why wouldn't they do this or whatever and and it's not like it's never going to be it's never going to make logical sense it's never going to add up and you don't know who says what in what room and you're not in those rooms and they exactly. never tell you exactly what you hope they're going to say in front of your face cuz they they normally don't right but um you know this is one of the reasons I brought this thing up to I remember being at the comedy store one night and I had taken a break I think for like 6 or 7 months and I walked in and I was at the bar and you looked at me and you're like where the fuck have you been is what you said <laughs> to me. and I was like well I haven't been doing it for a little bit and I, I I need to jump back up and you go I don't know how you do that I couldn't do it you like and meaning with stand up taking any time off because and it was I always stuck with me like that's how you in order to be as successful as you are and all these other comedians whether Sebastian or not you got to live this. You got to. Yeah. I never wanted to disrespect it to where I. So I, I stopped. Is that like a kind of a? I always felt it was like a blessing and a curse at the same time. Like you can't, has it hurt or helped you in certain relationships and things as far as like being so dedicated to the game. Um, you know, I think it's. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's 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 helped in my current relationship. Right. My my wife loves everything about this, <laughs> but um, oh, we're gonna we'll get into that too. It, it's, I want to learn more. It's always been um, something that uh, you know. It, it, it's it's you know. I mean, now I go on the road and stuff like that, so it's a different thing. But you know, I uh, you know, it's always been a thing that has been, I guess, something that that I'm a package deal with it. Yeah. So I guess in any relationship or life or anything like that any anything that goes along with my life it just goes along with that that's right. it's it's what i do it's like your arm so yeah, yeah it's like it's just something you're gonna have to accept right. i mean it, it, i mean you know obviously my my wife likes uh comedy and comedians that's why you know she, she'd leave you if you didn't uh, do comedy uh, right <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean she's, she's not staying out. for my body so uh, <laughs> you know, it's like of course she's gonna uh, i mean she she right. likes to laugh she likes good comedy right. and you know so that was cool to her to go to the comedy store you know like when we were we were, you know before we had our, our 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 daughter or anything like that especially like we went to the comedy store a lot right. and we would go 
you know, when I wasn't on the road to go two, three nights a week or whatever. See, yeah. I'm so interested that that too, because I know again from knowing you from back in the day too, just like a lot of other comedians too. You like like you said, it's your it was your bubble and before your wife. It's all about and before my wife, it's about you. It's about you know me. We're selfish people when it comes to the stand up craft, and yeah. we don't want to let anyone else in our bubble right. at first. And it's a matter of and. I have been burned in the past relationships. I know you've been burned in the past relationships, and you play that. You you, you play that. I've been incinerated. You've been incinerated. I mean, but I remember that. I mean, again, bringing this this. You went through a particular relationship. I remember during that time at the comedy store, and I remember though, and everyone was talking about how pissed off you were and how much pain you were in. But you were fucking killing it on stage during that time. Yeah, slaying it like yeah. with the nothing. You're not now, but I mean, like the power of that. Pain. Oh yeah, I mean when you when you actually be, when you're able to channel yeah. some personal pain into what you're doing because I you know the relationship you're talking about like I I um it was I was in a relationship with a with another comedian right and you know she was actually uh, like uh, like you know I guess uh, more like further like further ahead of me you know in the hierarchy at the comedy store right. and just in the comedy world in, ge in general when we got together. And Did she use that against you? No, I, I, I think she started to get like more aggravated when she saw me starting to 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 oh, pass really? her. You know, like and it, and it became a you know sort of a um, tug of war maybe. It, it just became a, a a source of you know we were having a lot of other problems. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, How long were you guys together? A couple of years. Okay. Uh, but oh wow! It, I didn't realize it, 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 but it was just you know we lived together and stuff. Okay. Yeah. I had to, <laughs> I had to call my buddy to like move my stuff out. I didn't and know you guys yeah, lived was, together. Yeah, it was rough. But, oh wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for bringing it up, Harlow. Yeah, I, yeah. I had my friend show up in a chopper. You know, oh shit! So <laughs> get just get there, all yeah. your stuff out. Yeah, yeah. But okay. it, it was. But I mean, that was the thing. It was like I never. That's where the pine cone joke came from, right? Right. Right. And and when we were t together, you know. Like I never talked about our relationship on stage because I didn't want to. I didn't want to upset her. Right. But I, I didn't want to. Um. I didn't. I didn't want to get into it because it would. It would always just be something that you know. I. I couldn't air our business. You know. When. Uh. You know. We were together. Or whatever. Just, even, even right after we broke up, it right. was just like I. I didn't want to be a, a jerk and and. When you did know, gloves because, come off though? Because everybody else would know who I was talking about. Right. But what? then it, it became a thing where it was like. You know, I I think I came in one night and I saw she was talking about me. Oh, and and, so then the and came yeah, on. Right. poorly. Right. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, and she was talking about me, so I was like, all right, you right. know what? Fuck it. All right. right, I guess <laughs> I guess it's on. We can do this. Yeah. And uh, I, that's where and I started. I came up with that pine cone so bit, good. and it was just so it was so good. There was so <laughs> it's so relieving yeah. too when you have something like that to just. To just sling some kind of heat especially like when you that. get the laugh off of it, yeah. And when you get the laugh off, you go, oh yeah, now yeah. And now you start writing more. And Airing all yeah, that yeah, frustration yeah. Sure. is so beautiful. It's so <laughs> wonderful to do, right. and 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 I just realized how much I'd been missing that too right. throughout our relationship. I was like, oh my god, I finally can just take the, the you know, just take these handcuffs off it's and therapy. just go. And, and it was it oh, it really is. But it, does that also like you like you know? Like you said before, when you're going through these kind of trial and tribulations, you're going through. You don't want to go through it, but even with the, you use the example for the pine cone joke, right? And that, I remember being in the store and like you leveling people with with that with that joke. But then at that point, you go, well, if I'm going that deep and pulling from that kind of pain, I'm going to other places too. And how much does that particular experience start to help your writing? It opens it up. Yeah. It, it opens it up. I mean, it's it's a you know it's a growing experience with everything, you know. And uh, I mean. You know, I, I still look back now and go take like a bit like that. I mean, I probably did the pine cone bit pretty well, but there's other bits that I did back then, like when I was young, trying to, to develop that I really, you know, I look at them. I, I wish I could have back, sure. you know, at this stage because it's like, oh, I'm so, you know, I'm so much, <laughs> I'm more of a man as a comic now. It's right. like, oh, I could tear that up now. But it's like, you know, you, you needed it to get to this level. But, right. um, you know, it really is, it, it does open a lot of, uh, doors mentally right. you know because you're just like oh i did that and then you you just from the it's like inertia from that it's like oh next thing boom let's you know and you just start you just get this flood of writing right done and i i mean i you know it's like i you know i make i have a joke in my act i talk about it the you know comedy is better than sex for me because 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of good at it, and, uh, <laughs> but it's the truth. Right. You know, it's like it, it really is like one of those things where it's like I there's something so addictive and and so irresistible about coming up with something new, right. and you know having other people laugh with you about something that you know you thought of it, it just randomly like on the toilet or something, yeah. and it's like everybody's laughing with me. It's it's just wonderful. Yeah, really well, and you well, but your your mind becomes like that ultimate tool because you start to listen and craft like the way as again when you're coming up in the comedy store and you're learning from going up every night whether it's in the, so for again for people who don't know and we we got our lingo the OR at the comedy comedy store is like the the room right off the of original the, room, the original yeah. room right off of Sunset Boulevard then John to mention the belly room that's the upstairs room that originally was kind the of attic. created just for yeah it was just <laughs> and it was just created just for females at the time yeah it was just yeah it was for developing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, young female comics. Yeah, yeah and they sh- and they talk about that in in both the book and as well as the the um the, the television show on Showtime. But then there's the the main room, which is like the the big show on on Saturday yeah. nights. Yeah, it used to be Ciro's. It was like an old gangster <laughs> where uh, a lot of people died. But yeah, and ghosts yeah. and what stuff. Place where they say there's ghosts. Yeah. Did you ever experience any of the haunting stuff there? Man, I've been I've been through every corner of that building. Nothing, huh? Darkest plots, and I mean mice. <laughs> but, but, but nothing. I heard something There's, fall once and nothing was there. It was I mean, weird. you know, I, I had I, I had one of my closest friends tell me, you know, a story about how like something like chair got lifted. He and his girlfriend were hanging out in the main room one night when it was closed, uh-huh. and it, there was a chair that got lifted up and thrown across the room, and they didn't do it, and there was nobody. There was no possible way it could have been Ari. done. And I still, I, and and and. Uh, I, probably, but uh, I, uh, <laughs> but I, I look at it like you know, I, I, even from him, yeah, even from what I mean, he's a very good friend. Don't believe him. No, I, I'm like, I, yeah. I, sorry, I would have had right. to see you that. Gotta see it. You're probably yeah. <laughs> you're probably mistaken. All right, you know? <laughs> or, or stoned. Yeah, yeah you yeah. smoke a lot of weed. Right, so. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, there's a lot, of, and I think sometimes people tell the stories to to get it a little bit more. Hyped up, but look, there's crazy shit I've seen at the comedy store. Yeah. Um, Scary Perry getting blown by Blue Iris being one of those things. Is Honestly, that right? Dude, were you not there that night? No. At it was horrible. It was the most. I I, I ran into the bathroom, started like literally throwing up, and Dave Taylor followed me and he goes puking. Harloff's puking. It was it was it was during that, and and <laughs> it was it was all full. It was like two in the morning. People were leaving. That's the kind of shit that happened at the comedy store back right. in the stinky gym days. That's the yeah. stuff that apparently doesn't happen. Yeah. Anymore, see, I was probably yeah, better. I, mean, I was never. I never saw stuff like that. I. I was I'm always like, bastard. I got into like, you know, stupid hijinks. Like I was the guy who was like, you know, I had a, a water balloon slingshot yeah. and we were shooting it off the roof, you know, right. and, and the cops showed up and uh, yeah, I right. mean, that was fun. Cause it was, it was like, you know, cause they, they, they like, we got away, but I remember like, like right as soon as the cop was leaving this, this other girl shows up mad and wet. Uh-huh. <laughs> she, she she was gonna sue the comedy store and everything like they ended up having to give her a bunch of t-shirts and oh, stuff really? like that not so tickets they t-shirts her, yeah they gave her t-shirts and tickets i oh, remember they yeah they gave her free passes i remember like six months later all of a sudden these these this big group shows up and they're they're buying all kinds of top shelf liquor and they don't know where she's from they just know she's a friend of one of the managers there she says yeah. she is and it, it ends up being like that's balloon the lady. girl who I, I I hit with a balloon. Awesome. So I just I literally just gave him my credit card and I was like, look, <laughs> if you can just not ask any other questions, <laughs> really, <laughs> we'll just we'll just square this oh, away. Nice so it's you. like I got out of it for about four hundred bucks. You see, you, know, me, yeah. you see, you're you're a nice you're a nicer guy that I think a lot of people that that I kind of met through uh through this. Just there were some crazy people running around that whether it's yeah. the uh, the a lot of the open mic people that we saw back. They would let anyone perform back then but yeah. um who who were you running with back in the day like when you were from a 2003 2004 who, was, who you say like you were coming up with who you who'd you kind of get along with um well you know i feel like i got along with most everybody that yeah, i but, i, I, you I know, said, crew I, wise. I mean it's, it's, you know like i i was hung at like freddie lockhart was one of yeah. my best friends we we used to hang out like almost every night for a long time uh until you know basically he got a girlfriend and it, it, which was better than me, right. but uh, you right, know. Right, right. but uh, yeah, we used to hang out all the time, and I, I mean, I used to, uh, 
I was actually I was friends with uh, um, with Ari okay. Shafir and and Steve Renazizi. We used to go play poker. Yeah, no, remember that's um, kind of because I was friends with Steve and and Ari. That's kind of how you and I started hanging yeah. out. I remember being at Steve's like uh, Super Bowl party. Yeah, he always had a Super too. Bowl party. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And we'd always go play. Uh, me and <laughs> me and Ari would always go play poker and. Ren is easy would come with us sometimes. It was always me and Ari yeah. going like down to Commerce Casino. Like okay. I, I, I mean, and we would go like after our sets, and then we were like we were like we were just we we would literally just try to get home before traffic hit. Sure, you know, and uh, and I remember it was really late, like five five thirty, almost six in the morning before we leave, and the place was packed mm -hmm. when we left, and we were like who. What do you guys do? <laughs> like, what, do you, what? What are all these people right. like? What is your profession? Not right. everybody here's a comedian. I know right. that. So it's just it was so, but it was just so like kind of uh, you know free at the yeah. time. But we were yeah we were uh, we were good friends back then. And uh, you know, do you and, still see Steve and, and Ari as much anymore? No, uh, I haven't seen Steve uh, in a while. I know he moved to New York. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, you know, with you know, because he and his wife. Have kids yeah, and yeah. you know he had the the show of the league and mm -hmm. everything. But uh, Ari and I were were friends uh, for a while. But he 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 just he kind of yeah he he was. I have a, I have a crew of just a bunch of guys who just decided to stab me in the back. I guess that's what I was going to ask you about because I did I I didn't know about none of this because like I said I started going two thousand seven is really two thousand eight is when I really kind of started. Fading away from from going in general. Not, not, I didn't have any will there. I just stopped doing comedy, and I would visit. But then again, you were still going up there around there, like two thousand six, two thousand seven area. Yeah, right. You oh were yeah. There, you oh were yeah. Often. Oh yeah. Big time. And then one of the, something that I had, I knew nothing about until honestly like five days ago. Um, guys I used to talk to regularly all the time were like Rogan and, and like Joey Diaz, like all the time. I used to talk to those guys mm -hmm. and. Yeah. I'm talking to Me Ellis. Too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and then I, was, cool, I was talking to Ellis, and Ellis is like, they, they don't get along anymore. And I started researching, and I saw Joey, and then I, because you mentioned the Tommy thing, and then I, Joey's, Joey did this big, a big complaint, I guess, was the fact that Tommy was giving you special favors and letting you go up for like a half an hour when other comedians were, and that you were undermining other comedians, is what the report that he was saying. And I was, and I said, I, I knew Cap, I never saw anything like that, but I, again, I didn't know kind of the back and forth of how it all went down because, like you said, I always thought you guys were tight. They, they were. They, I, I don't know if, um, if Joey Diaz believed that he was lying, like knew he was lying about these things, yeah. or if he just had been convinced of of something that that wasn't true by somebody else. Right. I don't know, um, but. I, I, I really, it's, it's not true. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you look at the lineups from the, co the comedy store from any of those years, any of the years that I was going there regularly, why, why, why would I follow any of the people that I followed right. to, to, if I was getting special favors? And, I mean, when it comes to the 30-minute spots, I mean, I, I, after I did my special meat cap, I asked Tommy, I said, hey, Tommy, I said, uh, uh, um, on Saturday nights, would it be possible if I get a, a longer set on, uh, like, in the OR or something? And he's like, he, you know, he said, you know what, that might work. And he started giving me a 30-minute spot, which I thought was cool because I thought, really, they would only, they would light me at, like, They'd light me at like at, at like eighteen right. or nineteen. So it was like two fifteen. And then I'd end up going twenty five right. on a fifteen minute spot. Right. Instead, I was doing thirty minutes on a thirty minute spot. So okay. nobody's schedule got fucked up. So right, which right, I right. thought I was doing everybody else a favor too. Right. But I I just I really was just giving me time to work out. And I know that when I wasn't there, he also put like Sebastian mm -hmm. Al Madrigal up for thirty minute spots too. But it was like I you know it, it seems like I got. I got zeroed in on for, why for was doing that, that. But, and I, I don't know. Really? I don't know why, because it really didn't last that long either. It was only for maybe a, a year, mm -hmm. maybe a year and a half. Well, were you like in Ro were, were you and Rogan pretty tight? We were cool. Yeah, we were always cool. Okay. I, I always, and that was the thing. Like when I started hearing that uh, that Diaz was saying all this garbage about me, I texted Rogan, and I'm like, and I mean, I still have it on my yeah, phone. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, dude, I, I said, you know. 
I, I said, Diaz is spreading just ridiculous lies about mm -hmm. me. He's saying that I'm not coming to the comedy store because I'm afraid of somebody or, or something like that. And I was like, I haven't been to the comedy store because I have a child right. and I, I'm married and, and I've been on the road a lot. But I, I said, I was like, you know, if you have any respect for me as, you know, it, 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 as a comic or as a person, could you at least let me give me an opportunity to clear this up? Sure. Like whether it's on his show, whether it's in private because that's the thing is like I reached out to both of those guys yeah. and said, "Hey, I I'm willing to talk to you about this to set the record straight so that we can clear this this mess up." Yeah. They didn't want to do it. They just wanted to talk about me and not to me. But did and, Joe, and I didn't hear Joe any say did Joe say stuff too? I didn't Joe hear Joe did. Say yeah, cuz there was okay. there were times when Diaz wasn't even there okay. that he talked trash on me on his podcast. Okay. And it was like yeah, well, and, and the fact that he didn't come, get back to me like when I when I reached out to him about it, and I know he got the message because he gave the message to Diaz because Diaz mm. was using that in his because Diaz was like, I, like I don't even get on social media, but like Diaz was like, he, like it was like he was punching a clock yeah. every day and like getting on social media and just starting to just 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 trying to throw bombs at me, which you know I finally like started hitting back one day because my wife was getting pissed off from it, like she was like I can't believe this is. I, I can't believe this guy keeps saying this. What? Why? What is his problem? And right. it just I got on there, and I, and I and I just started. I started slinging back at him, yeah. and I realized like that was there was no match there. It was like I. I mean, it's not exactly. A, <laughs> he's not exactly a mental giant, so I kind of I kind of put him. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was there was no. I mean, it's, it's like I actually like threw trash talk, and he just called me a cunt a oh, bunch God. of times. It wasn't. It was like it wasn't even. Uh, it wasn't even a contest, so but, no but, but, but they're just, uh, yeah, those guys are, um, how long ago was this? It's like two years ago. Two well, years ago. It, it, it started then it was, I mean, cause when it was happening, like, uh, um, you know, the worst of it was like, I, I went to the comedy store one night and I said, I, I, I knew I was going to see him. He was in the OR. I was in the main room. Okay. And this and, was after all the exchanges and everything. Well, it was, yeah, it was when it was okay. after the Twitter stuff. Because okay. I mean, the only guy he could bring up, like to say that I had wronged him mm -hmm. in some way, was Rick Ingram. Okay. And Rick Ingram actually had me on a podcast with him. We talked about it, and Rick was like, "Nah, man, it, there must have been some misunderstanding. I might have complained about you one night, but I, man, me and you were cool. We've always been cool on the podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and and of all people at the comedy store, Rick Ingram is the only one who actually was like. Man, I, I he went to bat for me, and 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 he's and Ingram's the one, not a bullshitter, and and he's the one that that supposedly Diaz said that that like I I wronged, and it was like, are you fucking kidding me? Right. Like it it doesn't even make sense. And so I, I I went to the comedy store that night. And I was walking into the main room, and I was about ten feet away from him. And I look over and I see him, and I, I was like, you know, I got to say something. I mean, the guy was threatening to rape my wife online. I mean, he was he wasn't just threatening me with violence right. he was threatening to rape my wife it's just so out of line and ridiculous and and, this is, and undefendable yeah it's just yeah i don't understand why anybody would ever take his side or be like oh yeah get him joey like it's just fucking terrible and uh i i just i i said i was like dude who's paying you to do all this and he's like that's the first thing you said yeah yeah and he charges over at me he's like what do you mean who's paying me to do this starts shaking his finger at me it starts putting his belly into me like trying to bull me over this like a, a fucking umpire everybody yeah and it wow. was like you know, we we're in the hallway okay. and uh like i just all i did i didn't i did i just put my arm up like uh, like this i was like dude don't don't try to bull me over just just if you want to talk talk and people got in between us and then once it once he realized people were in between us he spit in my face like wow. I, I was like dude i i and i had to go on stage after that i was like what the fuck and uh how'd you it, do it was, and I still, I, I mean, I, I good. do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious because that, that, that's, yeah, that's, did, a, that's a different thing than a pine cone stuff. It, it, yeah. It's still, yeah, right. Yeah. It, it was something that, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I still channeled that anger. But um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it, it was, it was terrible. But I was like, okay, the comedy store is finally going to intervene. Right. They're going to do something about this, and. Um, Tommy's no longer there at this and point. And Tommy wasn't there, okay. so that's kind of why they showed back up, I guess. And I didn't know that there was a problem between them. I didn't okay. know there was any beef okay. until all this came up. And and I that's it's I, I remember I contacted the, the current talent coordinator, Adam, 
And uh, I'm like, dude, I, I said, the guy spit in my face. I mean, can you please? And he's like, well, everybody I talked to in the hallway uh, from that night, which didn't happen to be me, he's like, they said it was kind of a 50-50 thing. I'm like, what? He's like, he, he said that, 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 like, they said you you got in his face. I'm like, he's an ex-con. I'm afraid of him. I've never been violent in my entire life. Why would I ever do anything to him? Right. Why would I ever bother with him? Right. And it's like, it, it, it just it just became like a thing where it's like, I realize, I don't know if he's in on it or if he's just too lazy to to do something about it. But I was like, wow, I, that's why I haven't been back to the comedy store in a long time because. Right. Okay. So that's why when I initially asked you in the beginning, there's that, so that obviously is the whole reason why that was the last time you were there. Like, and well, it, I've been back when somebody else books me. I just can't call Adam and ask him for a spot. Okay. So, so you booked. And you how know, long, just, and that, so this was, and this is around like two years ago. Was the yeah. Last? Okay. It was so a couple of years, two years ago. Yeah. Is there, do you think there's a, there's any way to reconcile this at all? Like, do you think, you think that, you know, and again, because you mentioned Ari, you and Ari were tight. And Ari runs with, with, uh, with Joe and, and, um, yeah. I mean, all those guys, I mean, they, they, those guys all sort of started lying about me on podcasts. Ari so too? A, yeah. I'm like, dude, what the fuck is your problem? I mean, he talked to me face to face with my wife there, said, man, me and you are cool. I don't know what their problem is. Me and you are cool. And then goes on a podcast and talks trash on me. And, uh, and, and it's just shit that wasn't even, it's not true. Like yeah. they were, they were talking about like they were, it's, it was just, it's a long story, yeah. but it, it's just, it's like, I mean. And the biggest gripe was that you would, you were taking time from other comedians. That was the I, it's thing? Some, it was really vague. That's yeah. the thing. Nobody could really even pinpoint what the pro. This is the type of shit that. Why would the public even care about? It's like you well, talk. I think, to, I think I mean, it links back would, to the Carlos Mencia stuff too. But not, why not wouldn't work. you try to talk to a person right. directly though about it and go like, especially when I offered that so many times? I was like, dude, I went to him man to man. I caught, I got Diaz's number from Josh Wolf because he's a mutual friend. Yeah. And I mean, I I said I. I was like, dude, I left him a long message. I was like, dude, I, I, you know, I want to squash this. I'm sorry that things, I, I mean, this was after he spit in my face. I'm like, I'm sorry that things got out of hand. I don't want things to go like this. I you don't want to. This is after. I said, I said okay. this on his, on wow. a voicemail. Okay. And I was just like, I don't want things to, uh, to go like this. I just want to do comedy and go home like yeah. I always do. I said, you know, I, I said, uh, you know, uh, I said, but I can't admit just doing something that I didn't do because I didn't do anything wrong or underhanded or anything like that. I just, I mean, I just was, you know, I happen to be Tommy's favorite comic or one of them. I earned that. I didn't, we weren't friends. We didn't hang out after, you know, after hours or we didn't go. I never saw him outside the club. Right. Okay. We were just, you know, he just liked my comedy and saw how everybody else responded to my comedy and, that was it because he stopped because I think as Joey said he he had stopped coming to the store for a little bit I think even like in like 2005 2006 he hadn't been back for a little bit and then that's when he started coming back and I guess that that's when when all because I I had, I had listened to a little bit of of what what I guess his big gripe was right. and then and I guess I didn't know the extent of the Twitter thing that would happen and then uh, getting your wife involved in it too because I think that going back to what you said too because obviously your wife Jamie who has been probably easier for you to, to sit there to have the conversation with talk you off the ledge of certain aspects because you, uh, you, 2002 2003 jamie's not there to in, in a situation like this easier for you you guys are going through this together mm -hmm. and so what what's that like though i mean not just with the joey the, with the joey stuff in general but in general with your with your career and being able to say to, to hey, look this is the this is the tough times <laughs> you, you laugh at me when, I, when, I, when i'm out there and we, we've we've kind of we've fallen for, for, uh, fallen for each other and you think i'm a funny dude but there's this side and there's all this other shit that can come with it whether it's a crazy situation like that or there's a sadness in between for us and i, I speak as uh, the same language here too how yeah. does jamie get you to you know be a better better person honestly from from everything that you've kind of <laughs> no honestly from everything that you that you've even this this situation this whole thing that you're telling me like i can see the conversation you're going to need her you're going to be leaning on her because when people that you thought were your friends beforehand right and they're not there well that's just a yeah i i i, I never um you know i started realizing probably around 2006 or 7 that most of these guys weren't very good friends, okay. you know, and I, and you know, I had a lot of my own issues. This was before I met Jamie or anything like that. So I, I just realized like 
you know, I, I, I don't, they, a lot of their gripes were I just, I, that I would leave and I wouldn't hang out with them anymore. Okay. Like, I'm like, what, what, it's because you guys aren't very good friends. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you guys are jerks. But you're not I a mean, big social, I mean, you're, you're not a social dude. I wasn't, I didn't go to the comedy store to, you know, like hang out and get drunk. You and, went to work. And, you know, but yeah, I just yeah. wasn't, I was there to do comedy and yeah. go home. Yeah. And uh, it just, I mean, it just became a thing where it was just, uh, I mean, like I, you know, I never, I've never personally listened to all the stuff that you said you listened to, like with uh, Joey and yeah. stuff like that. But it, you know, I mean, Jamie helps me get, I mean, our daughter helps us get really recentered yeah. yeah. just as far as understanding what priorities are in life and just trying to like direct ourselves in a positive way, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's, whether it's professionally working on things that, you know, projects or anything like that or or getting things set up to uh, that, that, you know, that are just just positive things for the future and not dwelling on bullshit. Right. It's just um, it's just one of those things that it's been a nagging thing for me that's bothered me because I'm like, I hate that 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 um, people are just out there lying about me and I can't yeah. I can't say anything back like I just I just have to like let them just tell everybody a bunch of bullshit about me right. that isn't true and I, I it's a it's a real it's a hard thing to uh swallow, to yeah. swallow. Yeah, yeah sure it is you know? especially especially like you said though too where when you because there's a Comedy is supposed to be in general laughter and and what we do, but but yeah. look from but we also let's let's we call it what it is we from me just being on the ground for uh, it's a short time whether it's ten twelve years that's a short time compared to to how long you've been in it comedians and people in in that air, not happy people in general yeah. so there's yeah. a lot I mean we see besides the stuff that you're talking about, we've seen some crazy shit go down at that store you know fights yeah. and and people rubbing shit on door handles and cr crazy fights and all this great stuff but, <laughs> but yeah but, uh, funny memories funny <laughs> memories crazy, but I mean but then you do get into the the stuff that, that you're talking about now whether it's you, you look at the other I actually really always applauded the the way that that Rogan handled the Carlos Mencia stuff like I I that was something to me I mean this is my own personal thing is that I, I when, when that happens I had I heard I had seen I'd been the victim a couple times of, of someone kind of taking my jokes and doing them on stage so when that happened especially when YouTube was really popping in like 2006 that thing went viral so I thought we thought he was kind of like a voice for the comedians right and I it, thought he was too yeah I was a fan of his I mean if you look at any if you listen to any of my interviews about him I I, I mean prior to this. I was a big fan of him. I, I, there's I, no way that he would. He I love Joe Rogan. Down. I thought he was one of the greatest. I thought he was. I thought he was the the uh, the defender yeah. for truth and honesty and comedy because not only was he a great comic, he was also he could kick everybody's ass. Right. So I was like, man, that guy can just he can go up there and defend all the basically the weaklings underneath him. You felt I, he was I, on I, your it, side. Right. right, I felt he was on every. He was on the side for truth and honesty. Right, but that's why you called. And it. that's You're why saying, I was like, right. when he just ignored me, well, when Joey I was just like, tight, hey, though. dude, but this. Uh, Okay, but the thing is, though, is like, I know. If, okay, if if you're gonna be if you're gonna be tight with a guy who's got a questionable past and questionable character, and you're gonna really, you're just gonna believe whatever junk he says to uh, it, because you guys are friends and let somebody else, you know, get just get completely just yeah, yeah I mean it, it just just I mean yeah I, I have somebody just completely get destroyed uh, as far as like their reputation and stuff like that online it's like dude that's it's it, it he's obviously there's something that that isn't that doesn't add up with Joe like that he's not the honest guy that we always thought he was he's not he's actually He's actually much. He's, he's he's quite the opposite, I think. And do you think uh, that opinion and I would change what, if you guys sat down and talked? I mean, time? look, man, I'm always somebody who, um, you know, I'm always. I, but that's the thing. I always I made myself available to talk to yeah, them. Yeah. And I mean, I'm a level-headed, rational person who would always be like, "Hey, man, if you want to, if you want to talk to me, w w I'll talk." I right. mean, I'm not a guy who, who I don't throw punches. So it's like, look, let you know, I'll sit down and talk to whoever about it. If if you want to, you know, iron anything out, fine. You, well, I can do that. Um, it's a lot of things to iron out. It's a really, I mean, the one thing I do want to say about the whole thing yeah. before 
we get done with it is sure. it is that you know like i still have i still have a lot of mountains to climb i think in my career that i you know i want i want to get certain places that i haven't gotten to yet i still you know i i i'm not i'm not at the by any means at the pinnacle of um of my profession or what i wanted to do or what i set out to do but everything that i've gotten up to this point I can look anybody in the eye and say that I've gotten to this point absolutely, positively, 100% honestly. I've never stolen a joke. I've never, I've never uh, uh, stepped on anybody else to get, get ahead and be like, well, fuck them. And I've never done anything like that. I've, I've never been, I've, I'm always... I, I've been, I, I've always conducted myself in a manner that is uh, with human decency. I've always been a decent guy, uh, and and I can, and I can, I can always go back to that. That's why I don't mind arguing or, or or talking to those guys. That's why I wanted to talk to them before because it's like, look, I've got the truth on my side. I know what happened. I know what I've done. I know everything about what's what's transpired and everything that. All the stuff that you, they, they're trying to bring up or allude to, I, I mean, I'm not a dishonest guy. I know I've, I've done everything honestly, so I have no problem. I, I have no problem with, with any sort of um, discussion or any sort of, you, you know, you can open the book on, right. on, on what I, on my career or my life. Right. I've just never been a dishonest guy. Well, I mean, so because. I feel, I mean, again, from, from, from knowing you in the past that there are certain situations that someone brought up to you that you did feel like you were in the wrong, you'd say, well, look, maybe I fucked up here, but here's why. And, and you'd have conversations with them. Like, but, but that's, that's what you're saying. You never had the opportunity to really do that with those guys. Well, I, but I, but the thing is, is as far as what, wait, I don't, I'm not mean? saying as far as like that you did anything wrong in general, but if they, let's say they brought up a point that, but you didn't even have an opportunity to sit in a room with them. If they would have brought up, well, here's one thing that we had a conversation with that I feel like, you know, I, you did this. And if you felt in your head, well, maybe I did fuck up. You could call it. You're never going to say, you're never going to stand point. Even if you know that you're wrong, you're not, you, you, you'd be able to admit that you're wrong. Right. Well, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. If I've I'm done saying. anything wrong, I would of course admit right, to it. Right. And if, if, um, and if I had hurt anybody, if, if somebody had maybe misinterpreted my actions or whatever, like that's what, that's I, what I'll give you my version of the right. story and we can talk about it. But it's like, I've never, I've never done anything that I, like I said, that I, I could, you know, I would be like, I'm really ashamed of myself for that. Right. Or, or that I would, you know, I mean like, you know, the way they handled the, the Carlos thing. You know, I wasn't even there that yeah, night, yeah. and I just remember Freddie called me. It was like, "Dude, it's going down. It's on. They're on stage right now." And I mean, you look at it, and it's like it's just. I remember cheering for it at the time, and not because he stole anything from yeah. us. Carlos never, Carlos never stole anything from me that I I know of. Or anybody else that I know of, really. I mean, like even the Bill Cosby thing. Even though that seems honest, yeah. uh, that seems obvious. It just, it just seemed like his his explanation for it does make sense too. Where it's just like, well, yeah, why would he be stupid enough to take something that famous? But I don't know. Yeah. I don't know him, and I can't defend that one, that his actions. To... But I, and and it, he's he's I I've I've had my disagreements with him just over he is you know he's a guy who would come in and he would deliberately he told my friends he would de he told Renazizi and Freddie that he would come in and deliberately bump me. Just to show me who's boss. Who, who, what the that, fuck? That was Carlos. Carlos. Then, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Right. So, like, I, I've had issues with him in the past, sure. but it's never been over that. So when they confronted power him, on, moves, yeah. so when they confronted him on stage that night, I thought it was kind of a. I just thought it was another bully move. I thought it was just them getting up there. The only example of a joke they had was a joke that fifty thousand comics do, which is about oh, the joking? building the wall and yeah. who's going to help. Yeah, it was. It's like it's. It's just. It's not. It. It, it was just. I'm, it was I, like it was a bad example. Yeah, that you one, guys better be better loaded than that. Yeah, I, I, I'm on the other side of that one just because of everything kind of that I heard with going down with that whole scenario with Carlos and the way that he had been. It's kind of like stuff that you're talking about with power moves and and things in general, and that nobody was really stepping up for for. Because I remember when that happened, I was. I mean, I was 
like you said, I was cheering for it, and I and when I watch it now, I still kind of cheer for it because after hearing some of the things that he had done in the past. But that's neither here nor there as far as what's going on with you and that and that's sure, sure. with them but has that this whole scenario has that affected your career at all or 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 no you've you've been teflon on it, you do your thing it's and just affected like it, it's changed the comedy store so yeah. i can't I, I haven't been back there in a long okay. time you know and and i mean they called me the other day about you know they were gonna email me an invite for uh mitzi's, mitzi's yeah, memorial yeah, yeah, service yeah. or something like that and i mean that's that's making that difficult because right. it's like you're gonna I really go? do you know, I I, I I care about Mitzi. Yeah. You know, I cared about Mitzi a lot. I really, I mean, I do. You know, she's she's somebody who's who's really. I'm gonna miss her. Yeah. Um, literally, because yeah. she was like, um, she took you a know, shot. she was like a she was like a, a like a grandparent to yeah. me. You know, she really did treat me well, and and she meant a lot to to me and my development and my career, and it meant a lot for me to actually you know, impress somebody like her. Right. She was really, really a special, special person in the world of comedy. And it really matters to me, you know, that, you know, you know, she's gone now and I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, not show up for her memorial service, but I also don't want, like, I don't want any sort of weird you shit. There. I don't want any awkward right. thing to happen at, right. a, at her memorial service because of, you know, the, 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 the you know, the nonsense that, that that those guys have, uh, you know, decided to to drum up for no reason. I think and, uh, I mean, for that particular thing, and I, and I I understand all those concerns too. But I uh, for someone again because I being out of for so long and going through a different scenario altogether. But I I'm, I told my wife too. I said whenever Mitzi's thing is, I'm going. Like, cause the same, the same reason I went there. I and mean, when I was going on, when I was doing shows seven days a week, two shows a night, I'm. Mitzi was the one. You're funny. I want yeah. you to come back, be part of the club. Yeah. That I mean, that means the world to you when some, especially really someone does. of that stature, tells you that and says she wants you to be part of what she built. And like yeah. you fight for that. And you, that's why, regardless of all the shit that you went through over the last couple of years, you know you're still part of that thing, like yeah. that nucleus of comedy. Yeah. And like, and I don't want that to this to ruin go. that because it, it really is. It 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 means well. I mean, I just yeah. My my whole. Uh, you know, I just, I just feel like, you know, my whole time at the comedy store, I, I just, I don't want to look back at it in any, any way except positive, right. you know, and I, this and I still want to, you know, I still want to go back there when I, when I'm, you know, in town or whatever. I just, I just, like I said, I can't call that talent coordinator right. with, and uh, tell him for, I want a spot, but, um, has it affected my career otherwise? No, it's okay. just been an, it's just been annoying yeah. and it's been, uh, something that has been, like tweets from fans and shit and stuff like uh, that. It just it'll come up wherever here and there, and I I just it's frustrating because yeah. it's like no, that's not the truth. Why you know and but right. but you know people have heard it or whatever from this guy or that you know and, and they're, they're fans just like his, oh so well it must be true right, and it's right. not it's right. it's complete fucking nonsense. But right. it's like they you know I so it's just in that sense it's just like I just, I just you know I I I wish that. They, if they really had a problem with me, which I, I seriously don't think, I think it was all, I think it was all drummed up in in some way. They targeted you or something? You think? What? Like, what, what I don't know what why do though, and, okay. and that's just it. I don't know why, yeah. but it doesn't seem genuine. It just seems like okay, they have to know that this is bullshit. They have to know that what they're saying about me is 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 it's just not right. It's like they're 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 lying, and it, it, you know I would think at some point you know a, 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 you know a rational the rational minds amongst them would you know at least see that and go wait a minute this is right. this is stupid we don't even we we what are we talking about and they don't so and you know and it's like or somebody would just be you know a man about it and go like look I'll hey Cap I'll talk to you directly about it. They haven't. So it's like it's like, okay, so you're grown men cyber bullying another grown man? Really? Well, so I, I, for what? Yeah. Well, I, I just I don't know. Here's what I hope happens. I hope that I hope first of all I hope you go to, to Mitzi's Mitzi's thing. I hope that yeah. I, I really do hope that happens. The other thing that I, I do think again, I don't I haven't talked to Joey in years, and but from I did have that the perception that you had of Rogan before all this stuff. I still ha- kinda had that sure. perception. Sure. I hope that you guys sit down. 
I hope that you and Joe are able to sit this down and, and because I believe that he's going to be the one to be able to kind of smash this thing because like the same thing that we've seen in all these things that have happened throughout the years of the comedy store, all these, the big blowouts and stuff, eventually they do, I mean, even Joe, who was not, who was not part of the comedy store for a while because of the whole Carlos Mencia thing, they took his side, he, he took off. Um, and See, he's they back. blamed me for that. They blamed you for that. Right. In one of his tweets, at least, Diaz blamed me for that. They blamed you for the whole Carlos Fentz. Okay. That they weren't there for seven years because of me. Oh, so, I, okay. like, I, okay. I have nothing I, to do I, with that. I'm hoping that you, and I hope that you are able to talk to Joe about it. I, I do think, but I, I want to move on to something. But, but so, it, yeah, man. So let's move on to something more positive and fun. Tell me about the time you got assaulted at, on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I saw let's that on, move on to that, John. Dude, yeah. I saw that on TMZ. I'm like, this poor bastard. <laughs> I mean, talk about crazy shit. Yeah. What what, what happened? You got Man. what happened? Okay, I do a I do a monthly Brian Holtzman style. I do a monthly uh, series called Caplet. Yeah. Uh, where I do you know uh, a new six seven minutes of material um, and and uh, you know put it out online and I literally write the material in the car on the way to the show sure. or, or I did, you know, when we were going to Hermosa beach, especially, but, um, uh, cause I, I shot all of my, uh, all of the, all of them up until that one at Hermosa beach comedy and magic club. Yeah. And the, um, I, I, uh, I, I, I just remember that night I was about, I think I was like the ninth comic on the lineup. Okay. And they were telling me there was some woman in the front who was kind of a problem, but uh, they didn't know. Strung out. They weren't. They, they just didn't know exactly what to say, but they just said, "Watch out for her." Okay. Right okay? in the front, like. Right, yeah. Okay. Right, like, uh, yeah. Okay. Front, little right of center. All right. And I just, I go up on stage and I had a joke about. Uh, do you lock eyes on her first to look? Nah, at her? No, you I never. I never do that. Okay, I, okay. I, but I even mean, when you hear warnings. But I mean, like, I, you know, when I went up on, you know, for Caplets, it's like. I, I've just written all this material. It's yeah, like yeah. I'm trying to keep all that balanced You're in, in my office. head. You're in the it's, office. It's really yeah. hard to keep because you don't have any like old stuff to go to at that point. You just have to go. All right, it, it, what did what did I want to say? What right. did I want to? It's right. like it's like going on stage for the first time almost every mm -hmm. every month. So it's like it, it's it's a it's a pressure packed situation. I got cameras rolling. I got to try to remember what I wanted to do. And I go out on stage and I started talking about. I had a bit where I was talking about um how architecture is kind of lost on me that i i just don't i don't get it yeah. you know like i i had just been in st louis the mm -hmm. week before and they have the st louis arch and it's a nice arch but it's, it's, <laughs> it's an, arch, an arch you know i mean it, it's a, right. at the end of the day it's, it, it's an arch right. Right? so I, and i uh and i said i said what about the washington monument i said it's it's just i said it's a big it's a big pencil. It's a big cement pencil. I said, a lot of people think it looks like a dick, but I think they're reserving that design for Trump's statue. And uh, and and everybody there, you could even tell like people who might have been conservatives laughed at like that's like that's a good one. That's, right. You know, it was a, you know even Trump I think would have been like that. Ah, that was that was all right. <laughs> and uh, this one, this, these two women in the front, they both stand up. And the one just walks out and uh, the other one starts just going, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And, I, and I'm like, you know, I can only ignore it through right. two fuck yous. Right. And then I, at the third one, I'm like, no, nah, fuck you, stupid. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I started like, you know, I was like, I was like what, what are you, his mom? I said, what are you? I, I said, uh, I, what I, what is it? I, I said, I'm like, what do you think? I'm the first guy to invent anti-Trump right, material right, right, like right. are you serious like and and uh so as she was finally leaving I said uh I said um I, I said okay well on your way out remember you can always suck my balls <laughs> and uh she <laughs> she didn't like that one so uh she picked up a glass and threw it at me oh, and if man. you watch the recording like I just let it hit my belly like I was just like ah It'll take care of it, you know. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't need to move. And, Did it hurt? Um, and it stung, yeah. but it was, you know, it was like something was shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I'd never had that happen right. to me on or off. Is that stage. the first assault in your career? Event, yeah. really, of any kind. Like, you know, I, Dublin's I mean, I never, used to happen I, often. Yeah, and and so I mean, like, just through that, out, and, and I and and I mean, it got really ugly in the yeah. room for uh, you know a minute, like. 
people were yelling at that woman. Um, you know, she was yelling still at me. They dragged her out, right? They didn't touch her. No. She just walked out, left. Really? Unscathed, yeah. And (laughs) how did did that's a whole different story. Oh, uh, that's a whole, well, it's a whole addition to the story. But I, uh, uh, but the thing I was really proud of that night was like, I was able to take that situation and really turn the negative into a positive. I, I got people not only laughing again, but I mean, I kept the show going. I brought up the next comic. Okay. I mean, everything was... How much more time did you have left? I, 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 well, they actually decided not to like me that night because of, because <laughs> oh, of no the situation. Shit. They're like, right. just let him go. Let him right. figure this out, right. which was a really, you know, it was a good move. But... And you got it back. And, you and, and I got it. Yeah. I got it. I think yeah. I did like 11 minutes. She Afterwards. did. She did that at about three minutes in. Oh, and, she did like additional eight. Okay. So I did, yeah. She okay. probably did another eight minutes and got everybody... You know, you know, back into comedy again. It was cool. I sure. walked off stage, and they're like, "Do you want to press charges against her?" And I said, "I said, no, nah, I don't want to see her again." And you know, that was just me thinking with the adrenaline and everything yeah, pumping yeah. in the moment. Uh, but then, you know, it, it it just it it from there descended into, uh, you know, the like because the owner wasn't there. Mike, he, he I ended up like talking to him on the phone. He starts grilling me. It's like I thought he was just going to apologize for it happening, right. and we all move on. But like you know, he just he's just like, "What happened?" And, and and just keeps grilling me, and like, and then I said, "Well, it's it'll be a cool episode of Caplets." And he's like, "Well, I don't know if you want to publish that." And I'm like, "What are you, what are you talking about?" Right. And he's like, "Well, you might make yourself look bad." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and what, and I, I and suck I, my balls. And I, yeah, I realized like he was just trying to protect his club's image yeah, yeah, yeah. and was just wouldn't tell me that honestly and i mean i just i was like it, it, i was i was just trying to be um you know i was trying to be as honest and forthright with him as i could mm-hmm. but i was like just trying to get out of the conversation too and i'm like look you know here bef- go ahead and look at the tape and then we'll we'll reconvene right. after you you know we've you've seen the tape and i said it takes us a while to edit caplets and everything It'll, you know we'll and uh, and then the TMZ thing came up within a couple days, right. and it was like I wasn't going to try to stop that. Right. And uh, you know he was pissed about basically me saying that I I would we'd go over it again, which I don't feel like I should have had to make that that promise. But I said, uh, and and then and then he said because I I told her to suck my balls, he said that that escalated the. The uh, the issue the, the too four, much, the four thousand unnecessarily right. escalated the uh, right. the the problem <laughs> and I, and I was like look if you can think uh, you made a t-shirt in the moment of yeah. three words that'll defend yourself comedy free speech and keep the show rolling I would love to hear them right. but I thought that I thought I stood up for myself uh, very well and uh, I thought I kept it going very well yeah. and I was very proud of what I did on stage and. You know, and I asked them, I said, well, why is why didn't anybody apprehend that woman? And they, they said, well, we asked you and you didn't want to press charges. Right. I said, that doesn't, I said, you, but you have to protect every comic that goes on, not just me. If I was a lamp, right. you, you, you would have, you would have grabbed her, right? I mean, right. you know, it, it's, it's destruction of property. But, I, and I, I just, I said, uh, I, and I mean, the thing was, was like, they ended up like, Suspending me from the club because of that. Because I, I, some shit that you like they know go, that I didn't ask for. If that, that video thing. doesn't go viral, you, you you you're you're fine, right? They're, they're I not guess saying, maybe. Are you still suspended from it? I don't. Well, no, I just told him I wouldn't come back. You were they, it back. was just that was really awful, right? That they would actually say they would actually. I mean, I'd been going there for twelve years. So you've been through some shit in the last couple of years, man. Yeah, so man. like, so do you at this point? At any point, do you then look at your wife and look at your your daughter and say? Fuck this! <laughs> like at any point, do you go? What am I doing? Like, yeah, you, you, do, yeah. yeah. Do you have those conversations? Well, I mean, I have those moments in my yeah. head, and, yeah. and, and and I mean, of course, I talk to my wife about right, it. Right. You know, I mean, I, I, I you know, I don't want to deal with this nonsense. Yeah. And 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 like I said, it's like I, I'm a I'm a pretty peaceful guy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want any of this shit. And for some reason, 
<laughs> it's been following it's you. It's all just yeah, yeah. It's all it's coming all, at me, and yeah. I and I, I mean because I don't remember you ever getting into things like this in the past, and it's just and, like the last couple. Uh, and I'm the same guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same just, guy I was then. Right. I don't I don't look for fights. I right. don't look for trouble. I don't cause. I don't. I'm just not that kind of right. guy. And uh, I mean, that woman snapped at me because you know she was obviously a Trump supporter. But Arsenio went two comics before me that yeah. night. He talked about Trump, but she, I guess. She was still simmering She's at that point, right. and then she kind of hit her right. breaking point when I was. Didn't matter something. who it was; the use happened to be in the spot to where she lost. I guess so. Right. I guess so. And but, I, I, it just was. It's like, come on, man. I and and it, it. I mean, you know, the two clubs that I really considered home in Los Angeles. Yeah, right. basically, fell out for me within like a year's time. Yeah. Um. All right. So then you then say then it's because you've been you road really you've been doing you've been doing great in the road for a long time. Like and so the road then you just then you and your wife Jamie, you guys are talking and you say let's just concentrate on the road then book a lot of stuff. I mean because you're and so what what are what are you working on all together right now to say you know to get your mind off this shit to do to say I'm gonna go out and do some more shows back home. I'm gonna do some shows you know one of your favorite places like what first of all I want to know like when you sit down and have these conversations with Jamie what does Jamie say because I've again from knowing Jamie in the short time that I have she is someone she's sitting in the room and she is she, she gets you to that place to re- take it down right, right right calm down and so what does she say to you to say she's she's Adrian she's Adrian right or, well, yeah, right. And, I mean, unfortunately yeah. for her, yes. Yeah, but she's, I mean, but, but in that scene in Rocky Three on the beach, you yeah, know, and Rocky's yeah, ready, he's, yeah. he's done. Exactly. And, and, Afraid. And, and, <laughs> yeah, I'm and, and, and that, that whole scene, and she said, but you're what, not a man anymore. What does she say to you that you just go, you know what? That's right. Let's, let's, let's do this and let's get back on the horse here. She just, she just, you know, goes like, look, remember, we got, she just reminds me of all the things that we got going. You know that you know. I mean, the uh, professionally, obviously, right, because right. my wife manages me now too. So uh, you know, she's she's in it the same as I am. I mean, she it's it's our career, right? Um, so you know, it, you know, she just she reminds me of everything that we're trying to get done that that doesn't have anything to do with this small shit. Yeah, like it's just it's dumb. You know, it's 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 basically it's some it's some middle school bullshit. You know, like it's like, you know, it, it, it's not a it's not it just it, it's annoying. But you know, we got to let it go, right? And just go. You know what? It's just we'll we'll you know they'll get theirs when you know when I when when I have the opportunity. And I mean, I'm just trying to focus on the projects that we have going. I mean, I have. Uh, my animated project yeah. that I've been working on for three and a half years that I hope, still hoping to get off the ground. Okay. I'm starting a residency in Las Vegas, uh, May 10th. Okay. And uh, at, at Harris, and that's that's gonna be, you how know, long, how long? That, you that's gonna be awesome. How, so you doing a run at Harris? Is it so? Yeah, we, I mean, we start May 10th, and okay. I'll do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday every every week for indefinitely that's fantastic yeah, okay, yeah. that's a big awesome. that's a big move i love i love going to vegas yeah, anyway man. so i love the vibe in vegas yeah. so it it it'll be a really it'll be a really cool thing yeah, and then it'll be a you know i mean i i you know i i love i've always said i love doing the shows you know whether it's on the road or whatever but you know i really do miss not being with my family not yeah. seeing my yeah. daughter every day yeah you know and uh she's starting to get pissed off yeah <laughs> like uh you know when i leave you know she doesn't understand that i have to go and she's right. just like i want to play with you and i'm like i'm i'm sorry yeah and uh and skype just doesn't cut it right it doesn't yeah. it, no. it, you try you, you know but it, it doesn't no. it doesn't do it no and uh so just being able to 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 actually be with you know wake up and and go to sleep in the same place every day for a while right it's right. gonna be really cool yeah, yeah and then uh and then you know it'll it'll give me a lot more resources in all respects to devote to uh cartoon comic which right. is the animated project okay so what and what's going on with that with with, with that right now we're just uh it's a lot of talk yeah. all the time that never really um like the fox deal or better than the fox deal? it well um kind of like that yeah. you know where it's just like you know 
you have a possibility maybe with this company or okay. with this platform or with it, you know, and then it never materializes. So is the or goal whatever, then but, to maybe then you say, fuck it, let's go out, let's 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 book some of these gigs, make somebody make the make the fucking thing on our own. And and, and yeah, there's it, been we, we've 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 thought like that at times, like yeah. where it's just like, you know what, fuck it. We'll just we'll just if we can get the funding and we'll just we'll just make it uh, our on our own and right. then we'll see where we can go with it. You know, that's always a possibility. But also, why spend your own money if someone else is going to spend the money? Sure, right. sure. So, right. you know, it's one of those things that, like, uh, I think once the dust settles, I think once we get um, once we get going here in Vegas for a while, I think it'll be a lot easier to uh, chart out uh, some progress okay. for uh, for Cartoon Comics. And that's May 10th is when that begins. May and 10th, People can start yeah. buying tickets. Uh, I think they're on sale now. They're on sale now. Where, can they go to your website for that? Yes. They can go to your website. <laughs> <laughs> you want to interview love, her? Yeah, we should. Um, but all right, so go go to John's website at May 10th, starting at Harris at, uh, in Vegas. And um, But for, I'm, I'm going to take, because you, you uh, first of all, I, I appreciate you opening up and talk, and telling about all this stuff. Because again, who the fuck wants to always just relive this shit you've been going yeah, through the last yeah, years? Yeah, I but, don't. But I, 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 you know, but, I appreciate you talking to me about it, though, too. I appreciate you being honest with me. But I want to take, I want to take you, uh, I want to take you out here in a, in a positive note. I want you to tell me because again we did talk about Jamie though too and she is in the room though but I want to I don't really I don't even know how you guys met I assume is similar to to my wife met me after a show did you guys meet after a show yeah okay yeah. and that's see that's the same thing and then um, but it was it was funny because my wife it was was she there for um, and I'm it's it's, it's weird because she's in the room but it's like but was she in was she in the crowd um, like randomly or friends of a friend how that all what it was out? was I it was my first show uh, that I did back at uh, Kent State where I graduated I was it was where I went to school right. uh, um, and it's also where she graduated from oh, okay. and uh, she she graduated uh what was it two years before that a year before that no two years before that right. yeah because uh, it was 2010 and uh, she graduated in 08 I graduated in 98 okay. and I just remember I you know I went back there and I you know it, it was like really getting to yeah you know, it was just really having that that nostalgic feeling the yeah. whole time I was there like I was really tired because I was coming from another road gig or whatever but it was like still like man look at this look at this place it's the middle of winter it's the middle of the semester right you know and it's just like I'm, i was going to like the campus bookstore and like I'm sorry what year yeah, again was this This was 2010 2010 and okay. uh and and we just you know basically i did i did the show that night on campus and she had actually uh you took off work didn't you yeah she took off work and had somebody like sub in for her yeah. Um, she was and a go fan. to Vegas, okay, so right? Yeah. Okay, so she was a fan. She wanted to come. Yeah. See. Oh, great. Yeah. She was a fan from from Chelsea lately. I mean, Chelsea okay. lately is, uh, yeah. If it wasn't for Chelsea lately, I I'd be alone. But uh, yeah. she um she she uh she came to the show, and like after the show, I had promised this guy who had a bar off campus that I would do like a meet and greet at his bar mm -hmm. afterward, and I I figured I would be there for maybe. 15 20 minutes do the meet and greet take some pictures and then i was just gonna drive to my parents house that night right little did and, you know you know because they're like an right. hour and a half away right and um there was a blizzard that night okay so i was kind of fucked there because it was like i i can't really drive anyway so i go over to this bar and the guy who owned it greeted me at the door and he's like he's like he's like hey cap good to have you here i'm glad you're here he's like um he, he, I said, hey, I got some friends that went to school with me. I was going to meet them over there, I think. And uh, he's like, okay, but first I got to introduce you to these girls because if I don't introduce you to these girls, they'll, 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 be, they'll kill me if I don't introduce you to them first. So I'm like, okay. And I, he sits me down with, with her and two of her friends, and I was like, fuck my friends. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm going to sit here. And it was really like I got to – I actually got to live – the, the 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 life that i wanted to live in one night yeah. in in college you know because i mean basically in college it was like i i wanted to be sitting there with 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 three hot chicks right. and be like and they're all talking to me and, right. and and they always are interested in what i have to say and uh and 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 it was like she jamie didn't talk to me for a while like she was actually nervous 
uh because i would you know because i'm so intimidating right. and well, what she um, sees she, she this is this is someone she's well, seen on television right, on her right. show so she's she's waiting she, she, she doesn't again when you're sitting there I, I i dated someone that was on television beforehand too and i was sure. still i was in that situation to where you're like well do you i don't want to say a stupid thing and then once you start talking the vibe is there and, yeah because yeah. that was it it was like you know i mean because she hates when I say this, so it was her personality that really attracted me to her. Like, I mean, it's like she, it, it, it was like, I, you know, I, I couldn't find many people that could like sort of go back and forth with me, yeah. sort of spar with me. Right. And she could, she was really, really, she had a really, you, knew you know, like that, sharp right? wit yeah. and very, uh, you know, she was obviously, she was a hot chick. Okay. It's almost like that. that's a given. You know, with 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 her. It was just, but also right, when yeah. you're on comedy, so you're a hot yeah. chick. Okay, but, fine. And when, especially when you're when you're on the road and stuff, you, you run into a lot of hot chicks. It's 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 a matter of, like you said, to where your brain, the one your tool that we've just been talking about this whole time, says, don't get up, pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is like, a, and it what it was seriously like it. It kind of was that where it's like, I. I should stay here and talk to yeah, her because, yeah. I mean, it really was. Yeah, because I went over and visited with my friends for a bit, but then I came back and talked to her. And I remember she uh, she drove me back to my hotel because they kept feeding me MGDs. <laughs> <laughs> it was like college all over again. Right, right. And because uh, I don't drink much either. And, uh, and, and so I was, uh, you know, I was too drunk to drive back to the hotel. So it was like she, she drove me back. Uh, and I remember like I, you know, she had me brush. I brushed the snow off her car. I offered to, and uh, I remember it was the first time she yelled at me for doing something nice for her. <laughs> she, she's like, "All right, you don't have to do the whole thing." Like I was, you know, I was like doing, I was doing like the the bumper and right. shit like that. Right. She's like, "All right, let's can we go?" And uh, so I <laughs> just wanted to do a good job, ma'am. Right. But uh, it, it was she uh, me a tip. You know, it, I I yeah, you know, I just I got her number. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, she got she gave me her number. I remember I called her the next day to. Uh, to 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 give me a ride to go get my car and and she didn't answer and I remember she uh, she told me that later on she was so excited there I I had I had texted her and you were all excited that I had texted her but she, she didn't was, show it she, she was smart she was asleep yeah oh, okay. so she was like yeah it was like uh, you know and I was like nah it's no big deal don't worry about it but she was actually coming to L A the oh. following week for her job oh that's cool and that was. Just everything really right. lined up perfectly. Yeah. Whether it was the blizzard, whether there was any, it was just everything really aligned perfectly for us to get together. And uh, and then she um, she came out to L.A. and it was like, you know, I I just I really never wanted her to leave after that. But it was yeah. like she, uh, I remember before she left, she said, "Sure, you don't need a roommate." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I. Dude, I was like, you can stay. I don't care. Right. I mean, it's fine with me. And uh, and 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 I really just, I it's like I knew from that. She says I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a fool for thinking like this, but I I really knew, just from those few days, like yeah. I just knew that I not only I loved her, but I could I could that trust could, her, yeah. And that and I knew she loved me. And right. she says it's ridiculous because she's she's like I didn't. So she but does, I'm so, like you so, did. So she I doesn't. Know you did. She doesn't watch the Bachelor. Like <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. She she didn't give me right. a rose, but right. Uh, <laughs> right. But she, you know, uh, it, it was just it, I just knew really from those days ago. I was like, I I think I'm gonna. This is gonna be something that I, I'm gonna I want to be with her wow. for a long time. Eight years later, here we and, are. Uh, yeah, and 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 you know. She came out and visited again. I we 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 met together like yeah. out on like in mutual spots when I was on the road a few times. But she moved in with me. I think we met we met on February twenty sixth, and she moved in with me July June twenty fifth of that same year. Yeah. Wow. And look and see if I would have known you back then, we were hanging all the time. I would. I mean, and you shouldn't have listened to me. I said you're fucking nuts. You're right. nuts to well, move it, in. It with doesn't somebody. seem right. Yeah. No, like, like, I would have said you're moving a chicken with you. Like yeah, that's most uh, times kind of dumb. Cap. Most, yeah. Right. Most times, especially. And again, from when you, now knowing Jamie, I, I can comfortably say this. But like, so, so we're like at the time, I'm going. Wait a minute. So this is a fan that you met. This is someone who's just moving to L. A. And now you guys are living together. And then you can fast forward eight years later, get in the DeLorean and say, well, stupid. I have, I have a well, kid with you now. Of course, now we but yeah, but at the time, of course, it's not a, yeah. Yeah, at the it's time. A risky, it's a risky it's a move. Risky, it's risky for her, too. Yeah. 
to, yeah. to come to move out one, just 100 this dude she, so a comedian you know, nonetheless yeah right we're fucked in the head and, right and she's going uh, she, she, and she and again from from living with you like right away you go through crash course when you're living with somebody yeah. like right away so she knows like any of the, the stuff that she just saw in chelsea that's out the window Right. Like she now knows you. She yeah. knows who you are yeah. when you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep, um, grouchiness, like all the that not shit. Not funny version of me. Yeah, all, all of that <laughs> stuff. She sees it, and that's when you know, like you said, you had, your feeling was right. Because here you are, yeah. like eight years later, yeah. and she sticks through all that shit, and she's the one that's talking to you off the ledge of certain things like that. Because you, you know, comedians in general, people in general, you need that. You need that spot because it's not easy to. I was very lucky. You were very lucky. I found my wife to where I never wanted to get married. Yeah. I didn't want to get married, I didn't want to have kids, I didn't want any of that stuff, but like very similar to what you were just saying, I sat down, I had a conversation with my wife, and I said, I, I can really be myself with this yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, yeah. because in other relationships, you're, you're talking to somebody, and you're and like, there's a different version of yourself. You feel safe. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, you just right, right. feel a lot safer being yep. Yep. just whoever you really are. Right. You know, and that's and that's a big deal. It is. You know, and, and uh, um, you know, we... we uh, we ended up like uh, we we got married two years later at the at the very same place that we met at. Yeah, we actually got married Did in the same really? bar. <laughs> yeah, we got it. We, she she made a Simpsons themed wedding for me. Oh, that's it awesome. It was uh, yeah yeah. She that's tried awesome. to make me as comfortable. Did as you possible. turn it into Moe's? What, was that? Did you turn the whole bar into Moe's? Basically, yeah. It was yeah. like it was just a lot of like Simpsons themed stuff. Yeah, Moe's themed stuff. We had yeah, yeah, a yeah. we had a like a runner that was like the clouds that with the Simpsons, sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, we we have that hanging in our house. But yeah. we uh, she um it, you know she she uh, who was it? What else was it? Oh yeah, it, it, like as far as like how I dressed, yeah. like she got a wedding dress, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean I still wore jeans, Jordans, and uh, and I bought a shirt with buttons. You know, because for the for the occasion, did you and wear did, a hat? And I bought a sport jacket, and and she told me she's like, you can wear a hat if you want to, and I'm like, I'll look like Fletch, so I don't <laughs> want to do that. So I ended up wear I ended up wearing no hat. Oh okay. But uh, yeah, it, it was. Uh, I don't think I've seen you in she, a hat without she, a hat in years. She tried to make me feel as comfortable as I could possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. feel in a setting that you know is kind of. It's just, it's kind of dressy and highfalutin, and it's something that I normally wouldn't feel yeah, comfortable yeah. with. So she's very good at. At, at trying to you know make me you know <laughs> make her crazy husband feel comfortable yeah, in, in certain to be, situations I mean, she yeah. seems she's, you guys know each other very well and again it's, it's i mean it makes the manager the difference between manager and agent you want someone to that's managing that that knows you that understands that can help take your career and just put yeah. able to calm you down and and say the certain things and who better then not only the, the my person, best friend your best yeah. friend and and now the, the mother of your daughter and yeah. i think like did you ever want to be a dad yeah no right same thing. No. we were in the same we were in the same thing and then it's like after the conversation some do you ever say no 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 if we get together no kids you know <laughs> we have differing versions because i remember we had a conversation <laughs> at one point when we were first together it was like yeah i don't want i don't know if i want kids she's like i don't know i don't think i do either and it was just like okay cool right. and then later on it was like i remember we had one drunken fight where it was just like it was like look i would why would i be with you if i we don't have kids i was like okay fine we'll have kids let's have kids it was that easy. let's let's get pregnant tonight jesus christ and uh so it was like you know we we i i so you did i have warmed kids, myself yeah. up to the idea but i really didn't I didn't really embrace it as as reality. Yeah. Is it because you didn't until, trust yourself as being a dad? Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. It, it, it had nothing to do w with obviously with my daughter or anything right. like that. Or did, I mean, can I do it? Can I do this? Can I, like, I can right. I live up to the standard that I want to live up to? Yeah. What I think a father should be. Right. Am I ready to do that? Am I ready to be that guy? And so it's it's uh um I remember like, you know, I had just gotten off a plane. And and she's like, she's like, hey, I wanna I wanna record a podcast right now. And I'm I literally hadn't gotten a shower yet or anything. Right. And I was like, dude, I are you? And I just realized I was like, she knows how much I don't want to do this right now, so it must be important. Okay. And I really had no idea. Going like, I mean, we had been trying to get pregnant for a while, but okay. I really just didn't think didn't put it together. I right. didn't think it was something that was really gonna happen. And then she told me. You know that we were gonna have this is on a baby. You, you and can, I was you, like, you could download this. <laughs> yeah, you can, and and you can listen to my like reaction where I just yeah. I'm like, huh, right. 
And uh, what's going through your head at that point? I mean, you're on the air, so what happens? Well, part of that, you know, I'm on. Yeah. I'm, 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 people are listening, right? So it's like I have to react in, certain, right. in a way that sort of pleases everybody. But it, it, you know, I, That's it, so tricky. there was like there was that. there was sort of a you know, yeah, it was like trying to figure that out because I was just trying to absorb it and then act like I I knew exactly how I would absorb it. You right. know what I mean? Like right. it, like it, you know, behave in a manner that I felt like. It just, you know, was Fuck right, this. was right, you know, that, right. because it was being recorded. Right. I didn't want my daughter to listen of to course. it years later of and course. go, you know, like, Art, seriously? <laughs> you said, fuck? <laughs> you said, suck my balls. <laughs> <I don't want laughs> but, yeah, right. 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 So, but, but, but it was, uh, you know, one of those things that, like, you know, all through pregnancy, I don't know how you were, but it was, like, all through pregnancy, it was still just, like, you know, I, I mean, it was almost like Jamie had something growing on her, right? You know, like, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. still it really didn't fully, Not you know. Totally there. And it was like, and then I remember we 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 had to have an emergency C section, okay. And uh, um, you know, and I don't. Did you do that like skin to skin thing with yeah. the right? So they with they they said I remember him telling us uh, in the 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 class that we went to that we left early. Mm -hmm. um, they 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 said that you know if we have to have an emergency C section it's up to the father to just do the skin to skin thing and I was like mm -hmm. okay so I remembered that but I was really worried about her yeah obviously you know going into surgery and all that stuff I wanted to make sure she was going to make it right so then they took me down with me and Madden down to you know the, they do all this they do all this stuff to your baby like they they blow out their nostrils Every, they pull it, yeah they, they, they stick you, things in their mouth and yeah, like, yeah like, terrible she okay things. she's fine it terrible looks, things it looks like our head's gonna skin. explode yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. right it happened it, on my, la it, my last it, part, yeah. so I I but I mean when I picked Madden up and they they gave it to uh, gave her to me and I and I and I mean it was the first time I'd ever picked up a child yeah and I mean she stopped crying. As soon as you know, she went to my chest, and that was it. And I was, yeah. it was, I was done. Yeah, from the, it was like she's got me. Yeah. I mean, she's got me forever yeah. from that. And I and I really, I'm tearing up from it now. Yeah, I mean, it really was, you know, just that moment that really made me understand I'm dad. Well, it was, and it and it really, I, I yeah. Well, dude, it's something Couldn't you said. Without and, her. and it was something that you said that. I can tell you right now, it's it's the person that says, "Can I be the dad? Can I care? Can I do this?" That ultimately can be that person because otherwise yeah. you wouldn't have those thoughts. Right. And right. That's that's what it is. Because right. Because like we you we go through our for a majority of our careers worrying about making the drunk asshole in the front row crack right. up, right. but then at that moment, it's not about nothing except right. that little girl. Right. And right. that's what it is. Because and now it, your whole life is about that little girl. And now, yeah. And it really yeah. does shift your focus from yeah. everything. Because, you know, because it used to be, even when we were married for the first five years, it was still just, or first three years, uh, we were together for five years. But it was still just about, like, you know, it was still just about us. And, yeah. and it's kind of frivolous in, in the long run. Where totally. it's just like, you're just, you know... I'm I'm adult me right. and I'm going worried about eat, adult going me. Going to see a movie, and, whatever. Right, yeah, 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 and yeah. it's just it's it's kind of empty. No. You're responsible for a human now, right? And yeah, we yeah. had dogs, you right. know, yeah, we, we, it, and we were right. stupid enough to think they were our children. Now they're just it, they're just dicks who we expect <laughs> to act right. But uh, they, uh, you know, it, right. it, but, but as soon as she came, as soon as I, yeah, it was like yeah. she's just she's just the most important thing in the world to yeah. both the, both of us. And uh, I, I I just couldn't uh, I I can't imagine my life if she hadn't come into right. it. Right, and and, then funny, and it's funny though too because you take you go again you get in that Delorean and you ask your younger self I don't want kids fuck right, who right. needs it and then now now you shut up dick it's the right. best part of my entire right. life no it's a, it's the truth and are there, are there any plans for for more or you're gonna you, we, we don't know. We're yet. good. We're, we're good. Good. <laughs> good. Uh, James, James, yeah, James right. we, yeah, yeah, we don't need that. No, we're good. We're, we're good. Um, look, man, there's so much. There's so much more we could talk about. I, I wanted to learn more about like with with you and 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 again your family and everything that happened. But I don't know if we can do it today. You got to come back and we got to talk again. Absolutely. Of course, um, man. All right. Anytime. People need to check you out at Harris. Uh, Harris, Las Vegas. And that's going to yeah. be May 10th. Um, and then I, as soon as you get that uh, that animated project off the air, we'll talk about uh, we'll yeah. talk about that. Yeah, I hope that's, um, that's soon. I hope you get this other shit worked out. I really do. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's nonsense. Yeah. It really is because it's just it's bullshit. 
So whatever. Right, well, I'll, I, I'll, I'll stand. I'll, I'll come and hang out. With you. I'll be standing with you at Mitzi's thing. Thank you. You get you come come to Mitzi's thing. I, I don't know when it is. Well, I don't even know. I, yet they too, still but, have. But they just, I was they worried that they got like no, no, sent no, no, to my junk sent, pile. I, I haven't. Junk. I haven't gotten it yet. Um, but but I hope to see you there. I'd like to thank you, your wife for coming in today as well too. Thanks for being honest and, and everything that you Absolutely. said too. And uh, it's been a pleasure to kind of catch up again. Great to talk to you as always. All right, guys. So once again, make sure if you are listening to this that you subscribe, rate, comment, do all that stuff. You know that. And if you're on YouTube, if you're on Collider, make sure that you leave some comments. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And again, if you haven't ever checked out John, uh, do stand up before it. You really should. He is one of the best. Um, and, and it was a guy that I looked up to when I was at the comedy store. You guys should go and check him out. He is hysterical. Really funny dude. And you guys should buy tickets right now, especially in Vegas. Shit, if you're in L.A., go drive out there. Who knows? Maybe you'll meet your future wife or husband going out to one of his shows and look that's what he, that's what he can do all right guys thanks again and we'll talk to you next time that was it that was the interview i hope you enjoyed it if you're joining us for the first time on collider video hit that subscribe button like comment do all that stuff and remember this is also on itunes if you're listening to itunes right now pull over and then rate it subscribe it do all that stuff hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows and we will continue to make more of them you can find all your favorite shows from collider on itunes on the collider podcast network thank you very much see you next time